Data visualization is the art of presenting a huge number of information in a compelling and clear way. And if you played around with it, you probably noticed that at some point it gets a bit boring because in most cases you would need to use a bar chart or a line chart or a scatter plot or a pie chart. And we all have seen those too many times. So what can we do to bring our presentation and visualization to the next level and really impress our audience? This is exactly what I want to show you in today's videos. And don't worry, I will go into the practical details so that by the end of the video you will be able to replicate exactly all the steps and create impressive data visualizations. So without further ado, let's get started. Some time ago I posted on my LinkedIn what I think is the most intriguing visualization I have ever seen, which is this one here, essentially showing how Americans spend their days. Most comments I received on the post asked me how to recreate the same visualization. And so after a bit of research I found this incredible resource that shows a relatively new framework that is called D3 Blocks. This framework essentially is based on D3, which is a JavaScript library for producing dynamic interactive data visualization in web browsers. And the amazing thing is that we can interact with it using Python. The final result is pretty impressive as we can create so many very cool data visualizations. It's all open source, so everyone can use it for free. And obviously I'm not sponsored by them. I had to share it with you as soon as I found it. And the only requirements to use this framework are having a Python up and running in your machine and installing the D3 block library. And let me show you exactly how to do it. And more importantly, how easy it is to create a visualization with it. Okay, so we are here in uh, Jupyter, which is the platform that I'm using within Anaconda to uh, run my Python codes. So the first block of code is to actually install, as we said at the start, the D3 blocks uh, library. So I'm gonna run the first line. Um, as you can see, I already installed it, but this should be a very straightforward step. Now, what I'm gonna do in the second block of code is simply importing pandas as PD. So uh, pandas is the data analytics library in Python to do data analysis. In this case, I'm using it to import a CSV file and then I'm importing the 3D blocks library uh, that we just installed. In the next line of code, as you can see, I create a data frame that I call data, and I'm simply reading a CSV file that you will also find in the video description. So make sure to download that in case you're interested to replay uh, this, uh, this whole exercise. So that is the name of that uh, CSV file is called sample data moving bubbles. So it's just a uh, random data that um, I will use to create our first visualization. So I'm gonna run this uh, piece of code in here. And then in case you're interested to see uh, our data frame, this is our data. So we have a column for date time. We have a column for the sample ID. So this is actually the person, um, a single person, and actually the, the state. Uh, which could be sleeping, travel, work, and so on. So we are retrying to recreate the uh, day in the life of Americans. So yeah, this is the, the data frame. And if I scroll down, this is the only block that I need uh, to create my final uh, bubble data visualization. And so let me explain what is going on in this uh, piece of code. Okay, so the first line initializes an instance of the D3 blocks class and assign it to the variable uh, D3. And so this is basically an object that has uh, inside it all the methods to create various types of visualizations. And then we call the method called moving bubbles on the uh, D3 objects, which um, as you can imagine from the name, it, um, it is used to create moving bubbles chart. So the first parameter of uh, this method is um, data, which is basically the data frame that we just created. We need to make sure that our data in a sp is in a specific format. So we're gonna look at that in a, in a second, but I made sure that uh, this data contains uh, basically what you've seen. So the timestamp, the sample ID, and also the status. Then the second parameter is the speed. So this is a uh, dictionary that defines three uh, speed settings for our animation. So we have slow, medium, and uh, fast. And then we have the file path, which is basically the location where the uh, output HTML file containing the visualization uh, will be saved. And so in this case, we have moving bubbles.html. Okay, and so let's run this uh, piece of code and see what is the final result. So as you can see here, this is the final result. In my case, um, the, the code is not opening automatically the browser. So what I need to do is simply copy pasting the, the, the last line of this code, pasting it into my Chrome, 
and then I press enter and this is basically uh, the visualization so now it's moving at a slow pace if I want to move it fast this is the way I'm just clicking fast and as you can see the, the time of the day is uh, moving way faster now and basically what this visualization is representing is you know each person uh, changing status between for example work and uh, bed and uh, sick travel board home hospital so you know a lot of different states uh, and so yeah changing between uh, different um, states over time and yeah it's pretty cool because you know it's not something that you see uh, every day and you definitely something that you can implement uh, as part of your analysis uh, you see that also you have different other options here so you can change a color and also save the chart at any time so yeah again very simple code to run uh, just a few lines of codes and this is the final result now obviously you might ask me okay we recreated the day in the life um, chart that we already seen in the post so how do we create a new one from scratch and the structure is and the, the framework the, the way of uh, proceeding here is pretty much similar so uh, you know you can definitely recreate a new data set uh, something completely different and again using the same framework to create a new um, bubble chart that will look obviously very similar but will have different kind of information so for example in this piece of code again i'm importing pandas i am actually creating a new data set and uh, for example an idea here to use this chart in a different way uh, or another type of analysis that you might want to visualize is actually uh, you know uh, seeing if I'm a gym manager maybe I want to see people within the gym uh, which kind of activities they they do at which time and so let's assume that in uh, I'm the gym manager and in the, my gym I have a cardio space I have a strength space I have the swimming pool I have a, a class space the sauna and also a functional fitness space so you know this is an example of different areas within the gym and I also again defining the data frame the date time and the sample ID which is the person actually doing a different type of activity um, I maybe want to create this rule where I know that my gym from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. is closed and so obviously all people they must be out of the gym uh, within this uh, specific time frame uh, so that is a uh, state out of the gym that I'm uh, creating in here and so if I run this piece of code, uh, by the way, make sure to uh, install NumPy as well in um, uh, within your piece of code because I'm using, as you can see here, NP uh, random. So I'm using NumPy as well as a library in Python. So if I'm running this code in here, this is, uh, again, simple, uh, five, the first five rows of my data frame. And again, I'm using pretty much, as you can see, the same block of, block of codes that we used before. So let me uh, run this one here. Again, I have uh, this link here that I will paste in my browser. So let me do that. And as you can see here, we have pretty much similar visualization. Um, again, I have the slow, medium, fast, and I have my different categories that I, um, I define. Obviously, again, this is a random data set, so maybe it's not making uh, much sense, but this is just for me to uh, show you how to recreate this uh, data visualization with different uh, sort of data. Also, I wanted to show you the uh, documentation of these uh, D3 blocks that I'm explaining here. Uh, you will again see that uh, in, uh, in the video description, so make sure to check it out because basically in here you will see, you know, all the different kind of visualization that you can uh, recreate. Uh, so in this case, as you can see, if I zoom in, we created the moving bubbles Well, we have the DT graph, Sankey, uh, circle, and so if you recognize it, we created the moving bubbles, but we have so many different types of very cool visualization that we can create. You see time series, we have heat maps, uh, we have the, the Sankey, uh, you know, so many different things. And the way to uh, go about it is to simply click on whatever visualization you want to create. So let's say that I, uh, in our example, we created the moving bubbles. And you will see here the requirements of your data set. So what you have to have in your data to actually create that sort of visualization. So in our example, uh, our input data set should contain three columns. So as we've seen, we have a date time column, a state column, and a sample ID column. 
So these are the things that we made sure to have in our example to create the moving bubbles. And then you see the different uh, parameters that you can obviously uh, you know, edit and play around with. And so we have things like the parameter color, the type color, uh, the parameter size, you know, different things that you can, um, you can edit to personalize your data visualization. And again, to show you exactly what I mean by that, uh, if I show you again the, the piece of code that we used, we used, uh, obviously, we input the parameter, the data frame, uh, the, the speed and the file path. And so if I go back to the uh, parameter in here, so we have the parameter DF, the data frame, which is the input data. So this is the one that uh, I was using for my visualization. I was then using the parameter speed. So um, the final HTML file contains three buttons for speed movements, which is exactly what we had in um, our visualization. And then we have the parameter file path. And so the path to save the output. And there you go. This is the way we can bring our data visualizations to the next level and create something new and original comparing to the usual boring charts that everyone is used to see. I really hope that this was helpful and will give you a new way to play with data and impress whoever is looking at your work. If you like this content and would like to see more on how to master data analytics and data visualization, make sure to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me to reach even more people. I will leave here in the screen some other videos that you might find useful and will enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.